I bet you're wondering why I'm running all of these PowerPC Macs in various states of open with a bunch of janky fans rigged up. Well, it's because I want to browse the World Wide Web, which lately has unfortunately become just a bit more difficult on these aging PowerPC Macs. For years, we've relied on the incredible 10.4 Fox project, which has kept a reasonably updated and secure port of Firefox just a simple download and install away. However, as of this month, October 2021, official development of that browser has ended. But not all is lost. In fact, several different members of the Vintage Mac community have stepped in to provide new options. So today, let's explore life in this post 10.4 Fox world and see how to keep our beloved PowerPC Macs safely browsing the web for years to come. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy subjecting your innocent vintage computers to the abject horror of the modern internet, and I know I do, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Yes, 104 Fox, that universally trusted and beloved modern Firefox port for PowerPC Max is officially discontinued. Or more precisely, it's put into hobby mode with no more planned official releases. But as an open source project, anyone is able to take the source code and run with it. The good news is a few very smart people have already jumped in and they've done just that. In fact, if you want to run 10.4 Fox going forward, you technically have more options today than you did historically. And I'm going to show you two very good options in today's video. But first, let's get on the same page about what actually happened to 10.4 Fox. As sad and disappointing as it is to see its official discontinuation, it starts to make sense once you know a little bit more about the project. You see, despite its extremely polished exterior and ubiquity in the PowerPC Macintosh community, it's not the work of some small team toiling away in a forgotten office in the back alleys of Silicon Valley. Instead, it's quite possibly the most professional single person passion project the world has ever seen. That's right, for the last decade or so, the whole shebang has been run by a single person, Cameron Kaiser. Dr. Cameron Kaiser, who by the way, also holds a full-time day job as a medical doctor holding high-level public office in a large city. I cannot even begin to fathom that level of dedication, hard work, and passion to basically work two more than full-time jobs and be at the top of your game in two disparate, highly technical worlds. If you'd like to learn more about the behind-the-scenes story of 10.4 Fox and the incredibly dedicated polymath behind it, I'll link to an article called The Lone Coder from my friend Ernie Smith on Tedium. It's a fascinating read. So it's very understandable at this point in time, the project has been put into hobby mode or basically low-key maintenance mode. Make sure you check out the official 104 Fox post about that linked below. One big takeaway is that Dr. Kaiser will still be adding in security updates, but there's no guarantee of timeline. And most importantly, there won't be any official builds released. If you want to update 104 Fox going forward, you're going to have to download the open source and build it yourself. But the key word there is open source. Because the source code for 104 Fox is completely open for anyone to download, modify, and build themselves. The only real caveat is that if you distribute your own pre-compiled version of 104 Fox to others, you have to remove the 104 Fox name and branding. So with that, two new projects have sprung up. One called the Unofficial 104 Fox Development Toolkit, put together by Chris Jones, aims to make it as easy as possible to build your own version of 104 Fox from the most up-to-date published source code. Even if you've never so much as looked at your macOS command line before. The other one, called Interweb PPC and published by Wicknix of the Arctic Fox browser fame, is a rebranded release of 104 Fox using the latest source code, which you can download and run just like the good old days. And in fact, he's even implemented a few small tweaks which should make it run 
even a little bit faster than the original 10.4 Fox. I think it'll be really interesting to take a look at both options and then run some slightly outdated browser benchmarks to see just how they all compare to one another. You know what's not outdated though? The sponsor of today's video, PCBWay, everyone's favorite PCB and PCB prototyping service and manufacturer. And now, share your PCB projects for a chance to win some fun prizes. Take some high definition and creative pictures of your projects and visit the feedback share page linked below to find out the two ways to submit them for consideration. And as always, if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. Let's take a look at interweb PPC first because that's gonna be your fastest way to get up and running with the most up-to-date browser right now. In fact, all you need to do is go to the Macintosh Garden and I'll link that page down below along with the project's GitHub and just download the ready-made version for your particular computer. Whether you have a G3, G4, or a G5, there are pre-compiled apps that will run on your machine, just like the old days with 10.4 Fox. Really, aside from the branding, this browser feels exactly like your good old 10.4 Fox. It's fast, responsive, identical user interface. All of your extensions should work. And it's all thanks to Wicknix, who we've talked about many times on this channel before, and who's probably best known for the Arctic Fox browser, which works on 10.6 and above, along with PowerPC Linux and uh, some other interesting operating systems. Now, I asked Wicknix if there was anything he wanted people to know about interweb PPC. And he says that although there isn't really anything too different from 10.4 Fox and that it's mostly still the product of Cameron's hard work, he did slim the browser a bit by removing a few deprecated background services, which should give this browser a slight speed boost. And his main goal is to merge whatever new 10.4 Fox updates come down the road and compile it into an easy to run distribution that anybody can just download and use, and also perhaps add a few other goodies. Now, what I thought would be really interesting to do would be to run interweb PPC and 10.4 Fox against each other on some benchmarks. And we have a pretty old benchmark from 2017 called the Octane 2.0 JavaScript benchmark. And although this is no longer maintained by Google, it is, I think, a really good benchmark to use here because being from 2017, this should be about the sites that you should realistically be visiting because any brand spanking new apps from 2021 using the latest web features probably won't run too well on 10.4 Fox or interweb. And this, of course, is a dual 2 gigahertz G4, so kind of the best case scenario for running the G4 versions of these browsers. So what I'm going to do is run the benchmark first in interweb PPC, and then I'm going to run it in 10.4 Fox, and we'll see if interweb actually does provide a slight performance increase. Okay, so ignore this open computer here. Since I've upgraded it, I think it's still having some heat problems, so... I tossed a couple extra fans on the CPU. Uh, more importantly, the Octane test has completed with what I assume is a respectable score of 3173. The only issue is one of these tests didn't actually run whatever the Mandrill and Mandrill latency tests are, but I assume those won't work on the 104 Fox run either, which will still give us a result we can compare with. So let me screenshot this score. We'll call this interweb PPC Octane. And now let's run the same test on 10.4 Fox. Okay, 10.4 Fox has completed and uh, 
Well, surprisingly, we got a better score. And yeah, the Mandrell test did fail again. So not what I was expecting. But I'm not a scientist and this is not a scientific test. Yeah, let's give a uh, interweb one more shot at octane and see if we get some wildly different results or if it's still about the same. Okay, on our second run here, we actually got a much better score, much more in line with what 104 Fox got, so 3442 compared to 3457. It was still slightly slower. So, I'll probably have to assume that both of these browsers are going to feel exactly the same for all practical purposes when you're browsing the web. Okay, now let's talk about the unofficial 104 Fox development kit because this is just so incredibly cool. As we talked about earlier, the only way to get updated versions of 104 Fox is to go to their GitHub, download the source code, and compile it yourself. So, Chris Jones has gone and made it incredibly simple for you to do exactly that. You only need to install Xcode, which is freely downloadable and uh, even linked right here from the Macintosh Garden page for the toolkit. And then just download either the Tiger version or the Leopard version and it will literally do everything for you. This incredibly creative app does two things. First, it installs the complete MacPorts environment, which contains everything that you need other than Xcode to build 104 Fox. Next, it runs an automator app that executes the build script 4104 Fox in a new terminal window. And then that app is permanently in your applications. So whenever you want to update 104 Fox, you can just rerun this automator script and it will redo the whole thing for you. Now, one caveat is when you choose where you want to build 104 Fox, that folder can't have spaces in it. I tried it with spaces first and it crashed and it was a little weird. So I use TFF underscore build here just because it needs to be something without spaces. And then when you run the actual script, it walks you through a couple options based on your system. And actually it even now lets you build interweb in addition to 104 Fox, which is very cool. So I've already built 104 Fox for this system. But what I didn't do is build a G3 version. So I'm going to actually do that. The way it works is that you can build versions of the app for any processor under yours. So if you have the G5, you can build for the G4 or the G3. I have a G4 7450, which this helpfully tells me right here. So I can build for that for the 7400 or for the G3. And I'm gonna go ahead and build it for the G3. And then it gives you a couple more options. If you're updating your build, you can choose option one, which is pull the latest source from master. And that will pull down all the changes from GitHub, merge them into your local copy of the code, and then rebuild it for you. Option two is very handy, especially on my machine here, because if the build fails or crashes for any reason, you can pick up from where it last left off. Now I told you my MDD here is having some heat problems and I think that was causing the build to intermittently fail. So I was able to use this option too, just every time it failed, I would start again from where it left off and eventually the build finished. The third option is to rebuild from scratch and that deletes all the code that you have locally and pulls the new version down from GitHub. So here we are going to do option number three because I'm building the G3 version now and I just want to completely start over. And then when it's done the build, it actually just drops the finished product right on your desktop. 
So I have this home built 10.4 Fox built right on this machine here and a home built interweb PPC again, built from source code right on this machine here. And I didn't have to do a darn thing, just run that program and it took care of all the heavy lifting for me. That's incredibly cool. So thank you so much, Chris, for building this incredible application. You are doing the PowerPC Mac community such a wonderful service. Now, before we end the video, I do wanna give a bit of a caveat to the compile your own browser build script method. And to illustrate, I've brought out my trusty Titanium PowerBook G4, which is a pretty mid to high level G4 machine. It's only got 512 megs of RAM and it has a G4 867 megahertz processor. And I did build both 10.4 Fox and interweb PPC on this machine. And uh, I had to take a couple precautions because the build took over 30 hours running this machine at full tilt 100% processor. So uh, I have these nice little USB fans that I propped it up on and that's what you saw at the beginning of the video. I had these USB fans on actually both of the machines because running a 20 year old computer at full tilt 100% for 30 hours, you know, I don't really want to risk this thing overheating. I also put G4 fan control on here. So I had the machines fans maxed out and these USB fans running for 30 hours straight. And uh, it did build just fine. I have both built versions of the browser right here on the desktop. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, but uh, <laughs> not particularly fast to do. So if you're gonna build your own version of the browser, and I definitely recommend you do because it is so incredibly cool that there is a script that handles, again, all of the heavy lifting for you, just answer a few questions and away it goes, but definitely count on having your machine turned on and running and cooled for quite a long time. So that'll do it for this retro web browsing focused episode. And uh, I know that a lot of people were pretty sad to hear about the discontinuation of 10.4 Fox. So hopefully the options I've presented here today give you new hope in the future of your PowerPC Mac browsing the internet because definitely there are some cool projects in the works and uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of other projects popping up because again, all of this stuff is completely open source. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Power Mac shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris Allegretta, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Greg from Hunt K Mods, Justin D. Morgan, Nick Hansey, Stig124, and Tom, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.